to go down the woods and I've got to use the ladder, the extension ladder here to climb up in the 100 year old apple tree and take some scion off of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can bungee cord it down and get it hooked on here good. This, I've got some pipe insulation. I think I showed this to you in another video once a long time ago and it's still holding up pretty good. The pipe insulation on here keeps it from rattling against the metal of the rack the roll cage so it keeps it a little bit quieter makes it ride a little bit better because this is kind of a nuisance way of doing things but it's worked so far in terms of putting this up there and getting this ladder situated and getting it in and out of the woods works pretty good because it's a 20 foot extension ladder so i'm going to take this down there Genevieve's going to help me hopefully we can get down there and back before more bad weather arrives i have not had a chance to get down there and do this grab the cutting these scions harvesting these scions yet because the weather has been so bad just have not had a weekend where we could do that each weekend we've had bad weather reports it just hasn't worked out so that's what we're going to do what i'm going to do is cut some of these scions Let's cut off these pieces we're going to put them in a ziploc bag i've got with me right here we're going to put them in that Ziploc bag, put a moist paper towel on them, I'll show you all of that. And I'm going to mail it to a buddy of mine who I met doing Death by Bungie. I've known him for about four years here. We've been communicating back and forth on the website, on the Facebook page, and on the YouTube channel. I'm not going to mention him in this video. I may, depending on how this works out, if he wants me to later on. But for right now, we're not going to mention him, because I don't know if he wants me to mention his name or not. But, um, I'm, I'm just really happy to have him as a friend that I've met through this channel, appreciate the conversations I've had with him, just like I appreciate a lot of the conversations I've had with a lot of you. Um, I do my best to respond to all the comments, and in fact, I think if I haven't responded to a comment that you've either left me on the YouTube channel or on the Facebook page, it would have to be because I simply lost track of the comment, either on my phone or on the computer. I'm not seeing it when it comes up there. I don't always get all of the notifications, I don't think, but... Uh, I do try to respond to everything, so just so you know, it's nothing personal if I haven't responded to a comment, but for what that's worth. Genevieve and I are going to hook this up here good, make sure it's hooked on good, then we're going to go down the woods and see how this goes. We are here at the 100 year old apple tree. Genevieve is with me. She's sitting in the ranger, right? Hi Genevieve. Hi. She's getting ready to help me with this if I need to use the ladder. We're looking for scions, the piece of last year's growth. We don't want something that's two years old. We want something that grew last year, something that's pencil length from the instructions I was sent by my buddy there that's gonna help me do all this stuff pencil length pencil diameter so something about that size want about 10 pieces is what i'm shooting for because that way he can select what he thinks are the best pieces and then he can use those best pieces transplant those onto some new root stock and then that should produce an identical twin to the 100 year old apple tree on a healthy rootstock that can then be transplanted wherever I would want to transplant it. How awesome is that? If this works, and I, it can work because this is not a new concept, but it's something that's far beyond what I have done with apple trees. You've seen me do some pruning, you've seen me plant some trees, all that kind of stuff here, but the concept of grafting and all that stuff is far beyond what I have any ability to do. So I'm excited about this opportunity to do this and the chance of carrying this 100 year old apple tree far into the future or its progeny, its identical twins far into the future. That really excites me and I think it's very important. I think if I can do that and if he can help me do that, I will be eternally grateful. I think it's just awesome. So we're going to see if we can get some. Now there is some growth growing off here. I don't know an awful lot about this. What we want are the extensions of healthy limbs that grew, the tips of those limbs that grew last year. 
On a tree this size, you can't reach up there and prune all that stuff. On my trees out in the field, the other trees right here in this little orchard, so to speak, those portions of the tree would have been pruned off of there last year during the summer pruning. Or I might be pruning those parts off this year during the winter pruning, for example. Those trees, though, are patented because they are all the trees that you buy, right? Those are all patented, believe it or not, because they're somebody's invention. They are trees that were grown either in Cornell, and they aren't trees like this one that just grew in the wild. This is just a 100-year-old apple tree is what it is. It's an old crab. It may not be 100 years old. That, that's probably an exaggeration, but it's still a very old tree. Now, it might be. It's the last of its kind. My... When my great-grandfather owned this property, my grandfather and his brothers planted these trees throughout here. Planted about half a dozen apple trees, maybe more. When we bought the place back in 1976 and moved in, most of them were dead. We cut a lot of them up for firewood. And I remember, in fact, right down here to my left, to my right, down here there's a stump. I could probably dig it out and show it to you sometime in the spring maybe. Is was the last one that we cut up for firewood. I still remember where that was. I still remember cutting that up with my dad when I was a little kid. I was probably Genevieve's age. That's kind of funny. But this guy right here is still healthy. You'll recall the last year I had a blind right over there and I shot two does under this apple tree. The only deer I killed and harvested last year and put in the freezer, I shot right here under this apple tree. It is a huge asset to this property and a big part of this property and a big part of my heritage. And that's why if I can preserve it, it's that much more awesome. So what we're gonna do is see if we can harvest a few nice little spots, put them in a bag here, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do with them. And you can see me good? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I clipped a bunch off the back of the tree that were just growing out there. Like I said, you probably shouldn't use those because those are suckers that are growing out of the trunk of the tree. They're good to clip off of there. And if they're usable, this person I'm communicating with will know that. I'll let him decide whether he wants to use those. But I climbed up on the extension ladder and clipped off a bunch of other pieces of the limbs and stuff like that, entire limbs. Some of these you can tell when you've got the, the limb, like I'll cut some of these out right here. These are nice and pliable, so they're still alive. The buds have not come out yet. They're not swelling. You can see where they're going to be, but they're not swelling yet. So we know that these are good selections. It's a good time of year to do it. It's about as late in the year as you want to do it. Here I'm in early March. This is March 3rd. Is that right? Yeah. March 3rd. So I think it's Saturday, March 3rd. 2018. I think if you wait until next weekend, we get a warm week, we get enough sunlight, all of a sudden these things start to swell and then it's too late. That's my understanding anyway. I could be wrong on that. But I'm going to chop up most of this into pencil lengths. And this one right here might make a whole bunch of really good options for them. And if you look, it's nice and green where it was attached to the tree. And it's a little bit moist. And it tells me that it's that's a nice living branch, probably a good selection for this, at least from what I understand. On the other hand, some of them that I cut off they are not as pliable. I could probably break that. In fact, the smaller pieces are, they broke off already without, look at that, it's hanging off of there. Broke off without, a, without, oh, this is dead. And if you look at it, the end where I cut it off the tree has a big brown spot in the middle of it. So that is, this piece will not work. I probably won't even send them that. That's probably not any good. And these, these other pieces, these are dead. So I'll leave them here. Maybe the deer will chew on them or something, but the nice fresh ones that are fresh and green in here, these I can cut up into lengths and they probably are gonna be usable. I'll send them and see what, how we make out. So hopefully we've got some good selections here. and Hopefully this will help preserve the 100 year old apple tree. Every time I put the rack back up on top of the ranger, I make sure that I shake a whole bunch of snow off where Genevieve sits, so she has to sit in the wet snow. Thanks.
Well, we made it safely back up to the garage, which finishing this garage and cleaning it out is another video coming this summer, I'm thinking. But for now, I've been parking the Ranger in here because I keep plowing here, and that way when I need to plow, I can get it right out of here. But we made it back up here, and I have all the Scion. I don't know if plural is Scion or Scions, but I put them all in this baggy we got them all cleaned up in there and they fit in there nice the what i understand that i am supposed to do is i'm going to wrap it in a moist paper towel leave it in there and leave it refrigerated and then one day i'll one day this week i'll put it in an envelope padded envelope probably and ship it mail it to them and then mail it like overnight if at all possible. So it gets there as quickly as possible, gets it gets to him in as good a shape as possible. He can refrigerate them until such time as he sees fit to sit there and stick those and graft those in the root stock. So hopefully that will work out just fine. That's the plan. It was funny when we got all done with this, Genevieve was looking at it when we were trimming them up and putting them in a the baggie. Um, Genevieve said, we should try doing some of that ourselves. And it really struck me, I thought that was interesting. It really makes me happy because I'm happy to hear that she's interested in that. She's always been interested in the plants, like we do the garden, of course. She's interested in planting things. She wants to plant flowers this summer, which I'm not into that, but whatever, we'll do it. Uh, the garden, of course, I'll, I'll do some more gardening and more canning and all that. And it's interesting, even though she doesn't go hunting, it's interesting to hear that she's interested in the outdoors and she's interested in these apple trees. That makes me... Uh, happy, you know, happy that we can share that together. So hopefully she's interested in that stuff going forward and we'll do some of that. I'm not set up for that this year. That's something I have to research over the course of a winter. Maybe next year we'll sit down and do some of that ourselves. But you can order root stock online that you can use for this process. Order the root stock from Stark Brothers probably or any of those nurseries. And then when you get the root stock that's the appropriate root stock that you want, you can graft it in there. It's an interesting process. I'm sure there are tons of videos on YouTube. That's where I would start if I was interested in doing this myself. So down the road I'll be doing that. Um, that's where we're at with this stuff. So I'm gonna get this done this week. This will go out. Hopefully this all goes smoothly and we've selected a really good choice selection of root stuff or of uh, scion or of wood. Uh, I hope we did, okay? And I, I'm, I don't know. Maybe everything that I am sending you, uh, I'm talking specifically to my buddy there. Maybe everything I'm sending you is not gonna work. I don't know. So if it does, um, I tried and I apologize for wasting your time. I hope I didn't, but hopefully it'll work. Hopefully there'll be something in there that's going to be useful and that will be beneficial and will work and will be appropriate for the grafting. Thanks a lot for watching this. I hope you enjoyed that video. While we were down there, Genevieve and I had a chance to go around. We checked the trail cameras too. So I guess I'll close out this video. Why don't we run some trail camera pictures? I haven't done that here on YouTube in a while. I haven't shown any trail camera pictures. So here's some trail camera pictures to hold you over until the next video from Death by Bungie.